Today, I've got a great message from a great man about perseverance and overcoming adversity to eventually end up with great success. Every young athlete should hear it, and it's coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski. As many of you know, I was 11-year pro quarterback, and I'm quarterback's coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. But outside of that, my prior job, after getting done with football, was to host and produce outdoor television, both a fly fishing show and a hunting show. Fly fishing show was called Familiar Waters, and my hunting show was called Gridiron Outdoors. Before I get started today, make sure if you haven't done so yet, subscribe, hit that like button, give it a thumbs up, and comment down below. Love to hear from you, and please share this video out. Any young athlete that you feel could benefit from this story, please share it out, because we're trying to help as many young athletes as we can. Gridiron Outdoors was a show where I brought either current or former NFL players and college coaches out to go travel the world, uh, exotic hunts, exotic fishing trips, and have a good time and talk about football and the great outdoors. Well, over the course of that time, I had the opportunity to meet some fantastic people. But one of my all-time favorite guests was a gentleman by the name of Steve Wisniewski. Now, Wiz came from Penn State in college and ended up becoming an eight-time all-pro player for the Raiders as a guard. One of the greatest offensive linemen in modern football history and, in my opinion, an eventual NFL Hall of Famer. But he has an incredible story that, if you're a young athlete, should motivate you and help you put things into perspective. We got the opportunity to go down and talk to Big Sandy High School down in eastern Texas. And he told that story. I wanted to bring it to you. So I can't do it justice. I'm going to let Wiz tell his own story. So right now... The great Steve Wisniewski. Now, you're really fortunate to have Wiz here today. I, I tell people all the time, if you watch the game of football, if you watch the Raiders when Wiz was back there. They don't because they weren't born. I know, but, it, but sure. if, you, if you get a chance to look at the video, it, for my money, the greatest guard in, in modern football history. An incredible person. I mean, just a great man. An amazing football player. Uh, and a guy who can teach you a lot. So I, I suggest you listen up. Steve Wisniewski, former Raider, absolute stud. Thank yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, we love, we have a heart for you guys. Why I love talking to young people is because no one knows your future and what's in you. And a lot of times at this age, you don't even see in yourself what you can become as a football player, as a man, one day as a husband, as a father, in the business world, or in the military, wherever God calls you, you don't even see what's in there yet. But football can help reveal, build, and strengthen your character. Let me uh, tell you a story about a, a, a young man. This young man was actually hit by a car, nearly killed, drug under the car as a small child, four years old, shattered his legs, he kind of walked with a little bit of a limp because he had some nerve damage and broken toes, so he wasn't very athletic. As he got into school, in elementary school, he was like the last kid picked for every team. You name it, baseball, football, basketball. He was like, oh, I'll take him and, you know, this kid too, you know. The kids got into elementary school and he found out he was dyslexic. So dyslexic means you look at words and the the letters are all mixed up. It was hard to read. So during reading, kids got, had to get up, a few kids, and had to leave to go to the special ed room for reading. So he didn't really like school too much. Seventh grade came around. He said, you know, his friends were doing it. Why don't you go out for the football team? So he went out for the football team. You know why he made that team that year? Because there were no cuts. Everybody made the team that year. But he wasn't any good. He was just a body who was just one of those guys. Eighth grade came around, guess what? You know why I made the team that year? There was no cuts. But he got a little bit better, and he got a little play in time. Ninth grade came around high school, he went out for the team. You know why I made the team that year? No cuts. He went to Westfield High School, a pretty good football program in Houston. And uh, he made the team. But he, this kid busted his ass. In the weight room, he busted his ass. He was working hard. He was positive attitude, positive character, pushing his teammates, hustling everywhere he went to his coaches, yes sir, no sir. He was appreciative of the opportunity and he said, hey, I'm gonna make the best of it. 
hey, he may not be a great player. No one of his teammates or his coaches looked at him and said, wow, that's going to be a great player. But that kid worked hard. He did his very best. And each year he got a little bit better. And each year he, he's kind of a late bloomer. Wasn't the biggest, wasn't the strongest, wasn't ever the fastest, wasn't the most athletic. But each year that kid just kept getting bigger and bigger. His junior year in high school, he had a good year, made first team all district. And then his senior year, he had a great year. And all of a sudden, he made all these teams all district and made all state for Texas. And then scholarship offers started to roll in. And that young man, because he was used to overcoming struggles athletically, physically, dyslexic, overcoming that, he just learned how to push himself and to work hard and to discipline himself. See, football revealed his character, built his character, strengthened his character. And because he stayed consistent, I believe in a plan from a man upstairs, doors of opportunity were opened up to him. And that young man went to Penn State uh, to get a football scholarship, play for Joe Paterno, the winningest uh, football coach of college football history. Now, you know where you're going with this. That, that young man was me. I went to Penn State. When other guys were going out, going to fraternity parties, man, I was training. I was working hard. School did not come easy for me. It didn't. I had to really bust my butt and work extra and even get some tutoring to get a, a, a C, to get a B. I mean, I celebrated a B. You know, I had very few A's, but I ended up graduating and getting my degree in four years, overcoming that dyslexia. I was a, uh, a member. I, I was the only kid not redshirted my, my year, my freshman year at Penn State. Became a second string player. My sophomore year, we won the national championship, and I was a starting offensive guard. My junior and senior year, I was first team All-American. It had only been done three times in the history of the school that a player was a two-time All-American, both junior and senior year. And I was a team captain, which I was most proud of. And again, why did that stuff happen? Was I lucky? I don't know. But I think the man upstairs looked down, and he saw that in me when I was your age, sitting here. When I was that kid that was just on the team. That was in me. My coaches, like your coaching staff, they wouldn't have looked around and said, that kid's a future NFL player. And I was further blessed not only to be named to the All-Star. Our All-Star team is called the Pro Bowl in football. I was named to the Pro Bowl eight times, which is the second most in Raider history. I've been nominated for the Pro Football Hall of Fame like four or five times. I've never made that final cut, but I've been nominated for that in the College Football Hall of Fame. But my, my, what I was known for as a player was being undersized, but a guy who would hustle. I was an offensive guard who was about 6'3". I played about 285 to 305 in those ranges there. But I would run all over the field. I would block my man here. And if the play was over there, I'd let him go. I'd run down. I'd try to get in front of the running back, block at someone else, block someone else. Then I'd try to help the ball carrier up. And then if someone was getting in the fight with my teammates, I'd jump right in the middle of it and separate the two. I was not going to waste this opportunity because I know from where I came. And one thing I want to communicate with you guys is, hey, I don't know if you'll play college football. I don't know if you'll play pro football. Maybe you will. But I know right now you're playing big sandy football. Don't waste this opportunity. Don't waste this practice today. Don't waste this season. Don't have any regrets in life because you're going to look back and say, man, I wish I could. I would have. I wish I could have. Give it all that you have. Invest yourself fully right now. Be respectful of these coaches and these teammates and see what that man upstairs has got in store for you. And hopefully you let your character get built here in football and you use it in the classroom. You respect and honor your parents if you're lucky enough to have parents that are still alive. You, you do the right things. Now, I've been on all these different teams, all these different Pro Bowls, played in the AFC Championship game twice, never made it to a Super Bowl. But I know some things. I also coached football myself at Stanford under Jim Harbaugh and at the Oakland Raiders. So I've been a coach and a player. And there's something I notice about the greatest teams, the best teams, the state championship teams. And that's this. One, the best teams that I've ever been on, I was on a national championship team in, in college is that they had a brotherhood. They had a love for one another. I can run into a teammate at the Raiders or, or Penn State, I, a teammate I've been seeing for 20 years in the airport, I'll, and we'll, wrap it, we'll give each other a big man hug. We have that bond together. Doesn't mean you're always the best of friends. I mean, I was a lineman. I may not have been a closest friend with a wide receiver or cornerback, someone I'm not around, but you have a mutual respect. You have a brotherhood with each other. You guys 
build that. Encourage each other. Love each other. Don't be afraid to love each other as men. That means you looking out for each other like a true brother. So the best teams are a brotherhood. Secondly, on the best teams, people aren't selfish. Hey, maybe you wanted to play running back, but they got enough running backs, and you're asked to be a wide receiver. Maybe you want to be a fullback, and the coach makes you a tight end. Maybe you want to be a, a linebacker, but you're so physical, they make you a D lineman. Whatever is asked of you, be willing to do. Be unselfish. Unselfish teams do really well. You'll do whatever it takes, and you're just happy for the opportunity to do it. And then lastly, the best teams, man, you push each other. The coaching staff doesn't have to be the bad guys to police the locker room. They don't have to be the guys yelling at you to pick it up uh, running sprints. They don't have to be the ones making you work hard in the weight room. Push each other. But don't be critical of each other. Push each other. So I was named a team captain everywhere I was at, at Penn State, at the Raiders so many times. I forget how many years I was a team captain at the Raiders. Seems like just about every year I was a team captain. And the reason was I – I encourage each other. Not everyone was going to be a Pro Bowl player like me, but I didn't yell at them, look down at them, be critical. Come on, man, you can do it. You're doing a great job, man. You, you can do this. I'm right here behind you. I remember running sprints, putting my hand in the small of some of the guys' back, just giving them that little boost who weren't as, as physical as I was. Or a guy who's a left tackle and he's really struggling. He's going against a good defensive end, man, and his head is all over the place. Say, man, we got this. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You're, you're doing great. We can do this together, man. Build each other up and let that be your trademark. As a player, you may not even be a starter. Maybe like me, you're just lucky to be on this team. But you can still be a great, great uh, teammate. And you can make Big Sandy into something special that you want to tell your kids about. And say, man, you know, you'll have a story to tell. I learned this about me through my experience at Big Sandy football. So anyway, thank you for this opportunity to talk. Remember what I said, there's, there's a plan bigger than you right here. Who knows where, where, where that's going to lead you? Who knows what obstacles are in your, in your way? I was run over by a car and shattered my legs. I was dyslexic as a child. I had a mother die uh, while well, parents go through a divorce. And then my mother died very unexpectedly. I went to Penn State and I had a trash bag. That was my clothes, and that was my house. Wherever my dorm room was, that's where I lived. That was my house. So I had a few obstacles along the way, and you guys are going to have some obstacles along the way. But again, that doesn't define you. Your attitude, your effort, your mentality, how you, you know, show yourself on the field, that's what makes you stand out. So thank you, Coach, for the opportunity to, to speak to you guys. We wish you the very best this season. And uh, over and above this being a championship season, uh, whether it's you know undefeated season or a winless season, you make Big Sandy football special from the way you carry yourself today. It starts with practice today. Okay. Thank you.